Bill O'Reilly here, Thursday, February 18th, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening across our nation. Legendary broadcaster Rush Limbaugh dies from lung cancer. COVID cases decline all across the country. Burglaries in San Francisco jump 62%. House Democrats discuss financial reparations for descendants of slaves. A new study shows 70% of Americans now anxious over race relations. Also ahead, the hatred directed toward the deceased Rush Limbaugh. But first, Mr. Limbaugh passing away at the age of 70 after a year-long battle with lung cancer. In my assessment of the broadcaster, I said he was the greatest radio force of all time. History counts few entertainers among those who made a difference in the country. Rush Limbaugh did. More coming up in the message of the day. New cases of COVID dropping by 16% in a week. The sudden decline also occurring in Europe and South America. 40 million Americans have received at least one dose of the vaccine. 16 million have gotten the two injections. President Biden says the medication should be available to everybody who wants it by July. Home invasions in San Francisco rising 340% in some places compared to last year. The police department confirming overall burglaries in the Bay Area up 62%. Armed robberies, assaults, car thefts, arson also increased by double digits in the first few weeks of 2021. So what's going on? Well, authorities in the city by the Bay are not enforcing the law. That's what. And that's what you get. Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee holding hearings on whether the federal government should give cash payments to the descendants of African slaves. The proposal doesn't have an official price tag, but economists say it would run between 10 and $12 trillion. Recent survey says 7 in 10 adults now anxious over relationships between whites and blacks in America. Another 26% say their level of fear is higher now than during the 2016 election. Three quarters of Americans believe the racial divide in the country is getting worse following anti-police riots last summer. In a moment, the United States of Hatred, reaction to the death of Rush Limbaugh. Right back. Could COVID cost you your home? Cybercrime up 75%. And the most serious of all is home title theft. Bill O'Reilly here for Home Title Lock. That's right, cyber criminals, foreign and domestic, are after our homes, and it's easier than you think. Title documents to our homes are online now. The thief finds your home's title, forges your signature on a quit-claim deed stating you sold your home to him. Then he takes out loans on your home and leaves you in debt. You wouldn't even know it happening until late payment or eviction notices arrive. Insurance doesn't cover you, neither do common identity theft programs. That's why I protect my home with Home Title Lock. The instant Home Title Lock detects someone tampering with my home's title, they shut it down. So please go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim. Then use code RADIO to receive 30 free days of protection. Please go to HomeTitleLock.com, HomeTitleLock.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. Putting aside what Rush Limbaugh actually said on his radio program over the decades he was on the air, putting that aside, when a person dies and his family is grieving, you do not attack the deceased unless you are a savage. And believe me, we have plenty of those in the USA. Now, if you read and listen to corporate and social media, this becomes abundantly clear, and I'm going to name some names. But first, throughout his lifetime, Rush Limbaugh provided a counterpunch to the far-left media which did not like that at all. Yes, Mr. Limbaugh made rhetorical mistakes in my judgment. 
but all of us in the media do. There is no moral mandate that you have to approve of Rush Limbaugh's style. However, to attack him and his family on the day he dies is, as I said, horrible behavior, unacceptable in a civilized society. Twitter allowed it. Remember that. Twitter allowed all of this hateful stuff to be posted. And so did the rest of social media. The Huffington Post was the worst as usual. The Associated Press should be ashamed. NBC News was hateful. A far-left loon named Aaron Ryan said, quote, God has canceled Rush Limbaugh, unquote. There were literally thousands of vicious attacks. Thousands. Even though CNN executives told their crew to tone it down. It is clear we have lost our way in America. We have become a society that not only tolerates hatred, but celebrates it in certain precincts. This is coming primarily from the far left, but not exclusively. There are conservative broadcasters, conservative people who post on the internet who are very, very hateful. Now, there is a very true adage that everyone should understand. You don't justify bad behavior by pointing to other bad behavior. So the rationalization that I can attack Rush Limbaugh or anyone else on the day of his or her death doesn't hold up. There is a word we all should think about. That word is decency. We are losing it in America. We are becoming a nation where haters are put in positions of power. And if you look throughout history, that will cause disaster. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve the message by writing it in a moment something you might not know. As you know, Joe Biden has won the election, and with economic uncertainty looming, I am now, more than ever, recommending you diversify with gold and silver. The only company I recommend is American Hartford Gold. I trust them. I personally have done business with them. They sell physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA, and they make it easy. Please call them now, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. Since I've been recommending American Hartford Gold, gold itself up over 40%, silver up 60%. So don't wait, call them now, 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD or text GOLD to 65532. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. In the early 20th century, a new phenomenon was sweeping across the nation, the rise of the dance craze. Once a traditional activity reserved for wealthy aristocrats dating back to the Middle Ages, the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, brought fun, energetic dancing to the masses. The craze started after World War I with the Charleston. Dancers would lock arms and wildly swing their elbows and knees. The move was banned in many states because it often resulted in exposure of women's legs. Uh-oh. In the 1930s and 40s, folks preferred the jitterbug. Couples held hands and swung themselves in circles while thrusting their feet into the air. The most popular version was dubbed the Lindy Hop after Charles Lindbergh's transatlantic flight. 
The 1950s witnessed the rise of the sock hop. Teens across the country gathered in high school gyms. The dancers earned the nickname because the kids were required to remove their shoes to protect the wood floors in the gym. The undisputed king of the 1960s dance era was the twist. The style was popular with parents, mostly because it didn't involve teenagers actually touching each other. Chubby Checker was the twist guy, and he described the dance as, quote, putting out a cigarette with both feet and coming out of a shower and wiping your bottom with a towel to the beat or something. Thank you, Chubby. Disco ruled the 1970s. The most popular dance of the decade belonged to the village people with the YMCA. That single hit number one on the charts in 26 countries from South Africa to Sweden. A recent big craze to sweep the USA belongs to the Macarena. The song by Los Del Rio got millions of Americans to hit the dance floor, cross their arms, and shimmy or something. The Macarena, ranked by MTV, VH1, Billboard, and Rolling Stone magazine, is the biggest one-hit wonder in music history. So, get out there and shake that tail feather. Remember that song? Back after this. Attention savvy investors, Bill O'Reilly here. Want predictable monthly cash flow? Is a 10% annualized immediate monthly payout good for starters? How about bonuses targeted to 21%? If you want the safety and security of a real estate investment, but without the hassles of being a landlord, you have probably heard of NRIA. NRIA is an industry-leading real estate development firm now in its 15th year developing strategically located, low-risk, high-demand neighborhoods based on supply-demand imbalance. They are a great fit for safety-oriented investors who want cash flow and diversification into carefully chosen real estate. Learn more about NRIA Real Estate Development Fund at nria.net or please call 800-800-1414. That's 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.